This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. Or if you're in Canada like me, you can use the same promo code at Multizone to get 10% off your orders of singles. If cards aren't what you're looking for, Original Magic Art has playmats, tokens, and sweet art that you can use that same promo code to help you get 5% off your order there. If you're looking to bling out your cards, Using Alter Sleeves is a great way to do so, and you can click the affiliate link in my About section to help out the channel as you make an order. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang, I just want to bring to your attention that Johannes Voss and Original Magic Art are teaming up. This will be the first time that some of his beautiful art for cards like Gift of Orzova, The Dog Plains, The Kaldheim Island, Prismatic Bridge, and Carpet of Flowers are available on playmats. The Kickstarter is running from September 13th until October 13th, and you can help support it and my channel at the same time by using the affiliate link below. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today's game is another multi-zone matchup, with Joel playing his Timna and Kamal deck, keeping Esper Sentinel, Crop Rotation, Birds of Paradise, Swords to Plowshares, Agadeeb's Awakening, Windswept Heath, and a Nurturing Peatland. New to the channel is Max playing his Garth deck, keeping Shamanic Revelation, Aurelia the War Leader, The World Tree, Savage Land, Forest, Castle Ardenvale, and a Frontier Bivouac. Someone needs to tell Dom that Prosh is the best Jun Dragon and not Corvold, but I won't hold it against him, and he keeps a Blood Crypt, Entomb, Gamble, Beast Within, Urborg, Nature's Claim, and a Necropotence. And last but not least, we have Miguel having brought his new Clouth Commander deck, keeping a Mountain, Two Forests, Kadama's Reach, Kroos and Grip, Lanoir Elves, and Dragon Master Outcast. Joel wins the die roll and starts us off. He plays a Windswept Heath, cracking it and losing one to go and find a land with white in it. He shortcuts first, tapping the land he'll eventually find for an Esper Sentinel, and passes. Max plays a tap Passive Ancestry, passing to Dom. Dom plays a tap Blood Crypt and passes to Miguel. Miguel plays a forest and taps it for one green and casts a Llanowar Elves. Joel plays an underground stadium and taps it for a green to cast Birds of Paradise, passing. Moving to combat, the Sentinel hits Max for one. Max plays a tap Savage Lands and passes to Dom. Dom drops Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth, making all lands into swamps as an addition to their type and then taps 2 for an Arcane Signet. Miguel's turn has a mounting coming in, and he pays 3 for Kadama's Reach. This has Joel drawing from the Sentinel trigger. Joel plays a Nurtrain Peatland, and taps a green and a white for Gadok Teague. He then taps the birds for 1 white, casting Deafening Silence. Moving to combat, he goes at Dom with the Sentinel, and then ships it to Max. Max plays a tap Castle Ardenvale for turn, and just passes to Dom. Dom draws, and has no choice but to pass. Miguel plays an Evolving Wilds, and then taps a red for a Dragon Master Outcast. He cracks the Wilds to go and find a basic, passing. At the end of turn, Joel uses Crop Rotation, sacrificing the Nurturing Peatland, and goes into his library to find a land. He puts out a Gaia's Cradle, and moves to his turn. Joel's turn has him drawing and playing a Swamp as his land drop, and he taps enough for Timna, and then moves to combat. T goes at Miguel, while a Sentinel goes at Dom. And both connect, which lets Joel, in his second main phase, lose two life to Timna's trigger, and draw two cards. He then casts an Elves of Deep Shadow, and then taps his Cradle for 5 green. This lets him cast a Fauna Shaman, and he plays it a Worldly Tutor to go and find Nethroi, and put it on top of his library, and passes to Max. Max plays a tap Frontier Bivouac, and passes. At the end of turn, Dom casts in Tomb, and pays the Sentinel tax. He goes into his library, finding Squee, and puts it into his graveyard, and then starts his turn. Unfortunately, unlike the end of Max's turn, Dom's turn is pretty uneventful, as he draws and passes to Miguel. Miguel plays a forest, 
and then drops a Savage Vent Maw, which takes most of his mana, passing to Joel. Joel plays Yavamaya, Cradle of Growth as his land for turn, and taps enough to bring out his other commander, Kamal. He moves to combat, and responding to the Kamal trigger, Dom casts Fire Covenant and says he'll pay enough life to take out Joel's whole board and the Dragon Master outcast. And with nothing else, Joel passes turn. Max plays a forest and checks his mana. He pays one of each colors to bring out Garth, and then passes to Dom. Dom's turn has him finally playing a third land, and it's a Sulphurous Springs, and he then casts Squee from his graveyard and passes turn. Miguel taps six again in his main phase, this time for Morag. He then goes at Joel with a Ventma, getting six mana from attacking, and then dealing five. In his second main phase, Miguel then plays a forest, getting a landfall trigger from Morag, and uses the six floating plus the new forest to help cast Clouth. Miguel then moves to his new combat step, untapping the Ventma, which has Joel casting swords to plowshares on Miguel's commander. Miguel then gains some life, and justifies attacking Joel again with the six powered Ventma. He also gains the six mana again from swinging, and the dragon then connects. In his next main phase, Miguel then drops an Arbor Elf and an Elvish Mystics, passing to Joel. Joel plays a Command Tower, and taps enough to cast Agadim's Awakening. He brings back the Birds of Paradise, Teague, and Timna from it, and then passes to Max. Max untaps and plays a Grixis Panorama as his land for turn, passing. At the end of turn, Dom casts Nature's Claim to blow up Joel's Silence. Dom untaps and plays Gamble in his main phase. He goes to find a card, and then discards Zulaport Cutthroat after Max rolls a 6 on a d6. Dom then plays out Food Chain, and responding to Dom exiling Squee to make some mana to it, Max taps Garth to make a token copy of Disenchant, and casts it, blowing up the enchantment. Dom then uses the mana he got from Food Chain to help cast Pitiless Plunderer, and passes to Miguel. Miguel recasts Clouth in his main phase with the help of some lands and his elves, and goes to combat. He swings his dragons at Dom for 10, and Morag goes at Joel for 7. This gets Miguel 6 mana from his Ventma trigger, plus another 17 from his attacking creatures thanks to Clouth. His creatures then connect, and in Miguel's second main phase, he casts Reclamation Sage and blows up the Arcane Signet, and passes. Joel untaps and then taps enough to cast Nethroy's Mutate onto his Birds of Paradise. He returns Kamal, the Sentinel, Fauna Shaman, and Elves of Deep Shadow. Moving to combat, Kamal pumps Joel's board, and he swings what he can at Miguel. Joel then loses one in his post-combat main phase to Timna's ability, drawing a card, and then pays two mana to cast a Fiend Artisan, passing. Max untaps and plays a tapped copy of the World Tree. He then activates Garth to make a token copy of Terror, and casts it to take out Gadok Teague, who's really bringing the whole party down. Max then taps four mana for Growing Ranks, and passes to Dom. Dom draws and casts Wheel of Fortune. The table ditches their hands and draws a fresh seven. And Dom then pays one for a Deathrite Shaman, and plays his copy of Gaia's Cradle, and passes to Miguel. Miguel drops his own copy of Kamal in his main phase, and moves to combat. Kamal pumps Miguel's board with plus three plus three and trample, and Miguel swings most things at Joel. Joel blocks what he can, focusing mostly on Morag, but still takes 25. At this point though, Miguel has a lot of mana from the Vent Maw and Clouth triggers, and uses Heroic Intervention to keep Morag from dying. Moving to his second main phase, he plays a Forest, and gets an extra combat step after this main phase. He moves to that one, pumping the board again by another plus three plus three and trample thanks to Kamal, and untaps his board. This time swinging Clouth at Joel to take him out, and the rest at Max. He'll make an even more absurd amount of mana, 
and shows Dom relentless assault and finale of devastation that Dom will be too helpless to stop and the table agrees Miguel's got the game in the bag. Game review time. So Gruul gonna do what Gruul gonna do, which in this case is smash face and make lots of red and green mana. I think if Miguel had been able to resolve or at least attack with Clouth earlier on, the mana that it would have generated would have made the game very different. But as it stood, only getting it out the last two turns made him a ton of mana that he didn't really need. Yeah, it was going to be able to help him cast that Relentless Assault and a huge finale, but I don't even think he needed the finale. Dom unfortunately seemed to struggle with land drops, and we didn't really get to see too much of his deck. It seemed very much to be running a lot of the stable cards you'd find in Corvold, and seeing Food Chain made me think that it was probably a combo deck. It was kind of unfortunate that Garth wasn't really able to do very much outside of removing Food Chain and taking out Gadok Teague. I think Max was setting up for a pretty sweet growing ranks, and then making a Black Lotus token and populating it seemed pretty spicy. Joel's Abzan deck seemed to be kind of pseudo-stacks and combat-focused, which is kind of neat. We didn't see too much of it, and a lot of the cards that he did play either brought the cards back that were destroyed earlier, or helped him basically get more lands. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.